Hey everybody, here goes a video on trapezoid properties. So before we can talk about the properties, first thing we need to do is talk about what a trapezoid is. It's a quadrilateral with one pair of opposite sides that are parallel. Unlike a parallelogram that has two sets. And the names of those sides are called the bases. So the sides that are parallel are known as a base. The other two are known as legs. Okay, so the bases are going to be parallel, the legs are not going to be parallel of a trapezoid. So we're not going to have a whole bunch of different properties we can talk about. There are only a couple. First one is that the same side, or shall I say the same leg angles are supplementary. Okay, not the ones on the bases but the same leg angles are supplementary. So if on the left leg, if this guy was 120, we would say that this guy is 60 because they add up to 180. Now the legs do not have to be the same. They can be, but a lot of times they're not. So if this guy was 140, then this one would be 40. So they add up to 180 as well, but they don't have to be equal. The opposite angles are not congruent. Opposite sides are not congruent. That's pretty much it for a standalone trapezoid. But one thing we can do in all trapezoids is we could take the midpoint of each leg and we can connect them. That creates something that is known as a mid-segment. And a mid-segment is going to be parallel to the bases, but it's also going to have a measurement that is the average of the bases. So to find the length of the mid-segment, we just have to take the average of the sum of the bases. So B1 and B2, so our top base and bottom base, okay? That would be the length of your mid-segment. It's the average of the bases, okay? And that can occur in all trapezoids. And that's it. That's pretty much all we have for trapezoids. So let's apply some of that to the easy questions. For these three problems right here, all we're going to do is find some missing dimensions based on the two properties we just learned. If you would like, you can pause the video and try these on your own. Otherwise, here we go. One of the things we just talked about here Hey, look at that. Exact same answers. This guy's 120, so this guy is 60. This guy's 40, so that guy is 140. There was really easy problems. Just all you had to do was make sure they added up to 180. So this guy over here, X is 60, and Y is 140. The second example... This is a mid-segment, so the top and bottom are our bases, and the mid-segment is half of the sum, because it's the average. So one half of 10 plus 16 is going to give us a mid-segment length of 13. Okay, so x is equal to 13. Now there's a way you can test that. 13 is 3 units away from the top and 13 is 3 units away from the bottom. So the last example, this one's slightly different. This time we were given the mid-segment. So one of the things I always like to do algebraically is you can set this up by saying the mid-segment is equal to 1 half the sum of the bases which would be x plus 12. Instead of distributing the one half, the one thing you would probably want to do here to make it easier is to just multiply both sides by two to get rid of the one half. So if we multiply both sides by two, we can just say that 16 is equal to x plus 12. Of course, subtract your 12 and you get x is equal to four. Now, if you want a shortcut way, one of the things you can always say is two times the mid-segment is equal to the sum of the bases. It's just a little bit of algebra. All we had to do is multiply both sides by 2 to get rid of the 1 half. Either way, you're going to get the exact same answer. Okay? 
So those are some easy problems involving trapezoid properties. So now we're going to take it a little step further and work with some isosceles trapezoids. Now these are the ones where you're going to have a little bit more to know. So let's think about an isosceles triangle before we talk about the isosceles trapezoid. One of the things that we knew, the legs of an isosceles triangle are always congruent, which meant the base angles of an isosceles triangle were always congruent. Well, if we think about a trapezoid, if we just took a line parallel to the base and just cut the top off of the triangle, you basically have a trapezoid. So that's what we have here. So a trapezoid is going to have some very similar properties. The legs are going to be congruent. The base angles are going to be congruent. But don't forget, trapezoids have two bases. So the top bases are also going to be congruent the base angles. Okay? Um, so that's it for the angles. So in this case the base angles are going to be congruent and the legs are congruent. The mid segment has the exact same properties but there's one other thing to talk about. The diagonals of a trapezoid will be congruent as well. Okay? So the diagonals are congruent. Okay? So here's two more easy examples based on those properties. Give them a try on your own. Click play when you're ready. Otherwise, follow along. We have 125 for the top base, which means x is also going to be 125 because it is one of the congruent base angles. So we have x is 125. Now the other bases to find those, you still have to remember that same leg angles are still supplementary. So if this guy is 125, then Z is 55 degrees. And since the bottoms are congruent, Y is also 55 degrees. Okay? So that is the first example, just dealing with the angles of an isosceles trapezoid. The second example deals with the diagonals. So if the diagonals of an isosceles trapezoid are congruent, then that means AB has a full length of 20. That means this diagonal is also going to have a length of 20. So in this case, x plus 8 is going to equal 20, which means x is equal to 12. Okay? So again, just applying the properties of an isosceles trapezoid to some easy questions. All right, so that's it for all the properties of an isosceles trapezoid and a regular trapezoid. So to finish this video, I would like you to pause it and I would like you to try four algebra questions. We have two on trapezoids and we have two on isosceles trapezoids. Okay, so when you're ready, click play and see if you did these guys correct. So pause it for now and see how you can do. So for this first guy, these are same leg angles, which means they're supplementary because remember in trapezoids, the bases are parallel. So to do this, we just have to add these guys up to 180 degrees. So 4x plus 20 plus 2x plus 40 is equal to 180. Combine your like terms, you'll have 6x plus 60 equal 180. Subtract 60 from both sides and we have 6x is equal to 120. So x is equal to 20. Okay? And that's how you do the first one because they are same leg angles. The second example is a mid-segment problem. So remember, a mid-segment is equal to one-half the sum of the bases. Or, if you want to make it a little bit shorter, what you can do is you can double the mid-segment and set it equal to the sum of the bases. All I did was get rid of the multiplying by two step by just multiplying it here in the formula. So either way would have worked out fine. It's your choice. So I'm going to double 
the mid segment, so 2 times 2x minus 3 is equal to the sum of the bases, so the top base plus the bottom base. That's going to give us 4x minus 6 is equal to 3x plus 10. So that'll give us x minus 6 is equal to 10. So x is equal to 16. Okay? Those are the two algebra problems for the trapezoid. Now, if you didn't do the isosceles trapezoid problems yet on your own, go ahead and pause the video again, try them on your own, and click play when you're ready. All right, let's do it. In an isosceles trapezoid, the base angles are congruent. So for this example here, we can set them equal to each other. And then solve for x, so we'll end up with x is equal to 50. So if x is equal to 50, we want to find the measure of angle 1. All you have to do is take 50 and substitute it into either one of these. And you'd have 150 minus 22, which will end up giving you 128 degrees for the top angles. Which means the same leg angle would be supplementary to 128 so that would be 52 degrees okay and in the last example of this video we are given some lengths here dealing with the diagonals AC is the full diagonal length and we can see that BE and ED are the little pieces of the second diagonal so this is just like segment addition because AC is equal to BD, we can say that 5X minus 4 is equal to the sum of the little ones. So X plus 6 plus 2X plus 8. That'll give us 3X plus 14 is equal to 5X minus 4. That means 2X is equal to 18, which means X is equal to 9. And if you got that, you are good to go. All right, that's it for this uh, video on trapezoids. Remember, there's a whole bunch of different properties for all the different quadrilaterals we've been talking about lately, but the trapezoids, they're not parallelograms, so they have limited properties for you to know. Just make sure you don't get them confused. All right, this is Longo and I'm out. See you, bye.